make this here with all the ice on it. I woke up some days later, a couple of days later, and the first thing I remember is the team of doctors standing around me and asking me if I knew what year it was. Wait, when you say they lost you, can you clarify what that means? Yeah, I, I, I died. I died. Um, and the next thing, I, it, it was some days later, I remember, uh, I remember waking up in ICU and the doctor asking me if I remember what year it was. I'm sorry, not what day, if I knew what year it was. Going into the hospital, I'd actually for over a week, but my conditions were progressing um, in the wrong direction from home. And um, we're, we're jumping all the way in. So uh, I had it. Um, my husband did not have it. He was taking care of me at home, um, speaking with my primary care physician, giving me breathing treatments, um, giving me my medicine every four hours. He was in constant communication with her. And uh, eventually he ended up testing positive um, within a week after I got it and just prior to me going into the hospital. Um, she could see, she was seeing me every day on FaceTime and walking him through administering meds. And um, when it got to a point, my temperature had raised right to about 103 and my breathing was extremely shallow. And so um, he called the ambulance. And so I had to go to the hospital. So I was discharged. The hospital needed beds. I was able to go home and go home with oxygen, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> and go home with oxygen and have home health aides come check on me throughout the week, which is what happened for a period of four weeks after being released from the hospital. So people were definitely seeing me. The people that could actually say something are not allowed to because of HIPAA law. But I was being seen several times a week by home health aides after being released um, on oxygen and I, I actually just got my first clean probably exactly a week ago. So I have what is called long um, and I am facing a very uphill battle um, right now. So I don't want to cry. I have a lot of rehabbing to do. Um, I suffered a lot of internal damage. And so I have a lot of rehabbing to do before I am able to be what I like to call concert ready again. And um, following the year I've had losing so many people, um, I had just lost my grandmother before I was diagnosed. And um, I just need, I feel like the only way I can focus on me is to actually focus on me there were people i don't know how fans or whoever they were coming to my house people ringing the bell leaving things at my doorstep disturbing my neighbors all times of the day and night i've had that happen it got to the point and this wasn't months ago i literally just left my, left my house maybe a week ago because i couldn't rest there my doorbell was being rung all hours of the day and night um i turned off everything I wasn't on social media. It hasn't been two months since I've seen my sister. It's been a year. I haven't been in the same room with her since my mother's funeral. Prior to that, we hadn't seen each other all pandemic long. That's not new for us. It's not new for us. We've been strained for a very long time. I was never missing. I was never missing. I was in my home. I was being seen by doctors. First and foremost, the two people in the house with we both had, um, there was no visiting. There was no visiting the house. We both had active cases. Everyone in my family knew exactly where I was. And I have to say that it's really disappointing that things came to this, but it was not true. And even when it comes to my daughter, I, I feel like she was easily manipulated. She's, people are saying she's a kid. She's not a kid. She's 27 years old. She's my youngest. But in that situation, she was easily manipulated. And to, to, to go along with that, um, she's my baby. I have never been in danger. I am not in danger right now.